When I was 13, I guess, 13, oh, when I was 13, it was a rough year for me. I got into all kinds of trouble. You know, I started doing dope. I uh, took a hell of a lot of drugs. I got into Rush. I got into D&D. Um, and I got laid. You know, it was like a big year for me. And so, of course, school was a disaster. And uh, my grades were just awful. And so uh, when the, the, the first um, midterm report card came out, you know, I, was, I wasn't flunking anything, but I had like a couple of, I had a D and a couple of C minuses, at least one D. Uh, it was in science. And, um, you know, it was the, 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 the midterm, mid-semester report card, and I didn't show it to my parents. I hit it. And then when the end of the semester grades came out, I hid that too, you know, and my parents were like, you know, once in a while they ask, you know, where are your grades? What, what, what's up with your grades? Right. And, um, you know, I, I just say some excuse or other and they seem to believe me. And so I was like, okay, you know, they seem to believe me and that's fine. I was probably high when I gave these excuses anyway. So I had bigger problems than just, you know, you know, faking it with my parents in so far as, uh, my report card was concerned. But the point is, eventually one day, my mom was driving around on some errand and she was near my school, so she decided to stop on by the school and find out what's what with the report card, right? And, <laughs> and then they found out, you know, she found out, and my dad found out that there had been some report cards and I hadn't shown them. I was hiding them, of course. And, uh, oh man, I got home that day and you know, the shit hit the fan in a big way. My dad beat the ever-living shit out of me. And I'll tell you one thing. I said a couple of days ago that my dad was an awful man, an awful, awful parent, and he was. But I have to say, hand to heart, after the fact, that was the one time that I fully deserved getting the shit kicked out of me, okay? Because uh, it was actually the only time my dad really kicked the shit out of me. The other time he was just a bully, but it was like a psychological thing. The only time my dad ever really uh, hit me was when I lied about that report card and retrospectively, even though I think my old man was a bastard, I had it coming. Because, you know, what the fuck, man, right? And so, now why am I telling you this? Because, you know, a couple of days ago I talked to you about living in fear. Now, after I did that video, I was thinking to myself, when was the last time I had really lived in fear? And I remembered that period when I was 13. Those, it must have been two, three, four months maybe, two, three months where I was hiding the report cards and I was terrified. And I remember every single day I was in fear. I was in fear of getting caught that I was stoned. I was fear of getting caught about the report card. It was just fear all the time. And eventually, at least on so far as the report card is concerned, the whole thing blew up and that was that. My parents never caught on that I was a big time drug user, by the way, that's pretty funny. But anyway, uh, in so far as the report card that blew up and and it taught me a lesson, a lesson that you should learn. And the lesson is always take the hit. Always, always stand still, take the hit. It is better to take the hit than to try to postpone it, okay? And that's something that I've discovered in everything in life. Whenever you're in a situation where the consequences, negative consequences are gonna happen either sooner or later, make them happen sooner, get it over with it's gonna hurt less. Everything from something trivial, like, you know, getting a, a, a vaccine, you know, to, uh, you know, going to jail because of some, you know, some crime you committed and you got caught. I have noticed that in every si single situation, a situation that's happened to me, a situation that I've observed, things that I've read about in the newspaper, it is better to take the hit right up front. Just get it out of the way. Just take it, just take the hit. Okay, now why is this? Well, because when you postpone the hit, when you prolong the agony, first of all, the uncertainty gnaws at you, okay, on the one hand. On the other hand, the time that you are stretching out the problem, you know, if you just taken the hit up front, you know, you'd be over it as it were. You know that, that sign, you know, um, you know, if you lived here, you'd be home by now, that, that, that billboard that they used to put up for developments, right? Well, yeah, if, if you had taken the hit, you'd be over it by now, see? But instead you prolong it, you prolong it and you prolong your misery. Why, why are you prolonging your misery? Just stand still, take the hit and you'll get over it, okay? 
A lot of times, the cover-up is always the worst crime insofar as politics is concerned. That's what killed uh, Nixon over Watergate. See, it wasn't that, you know, some, some operatives for the Republican National Committee went and broke into the Democratic National Committee headquarters to steal some documents. That was the trivial part. The serious part was that Nixon tried to cover it up and tried to organize payoff monies and all the rest of it. That's what killed him. It wasn't the actual scandal. See, if he'd st stood still, taken the hit, sacrificed a few people, principally John Mitchell. If he'd just given John Mitchell up and said, oh, he thought it up. And John Mitchell would have been the fall guy happily. You know, he was loyal to Nixon, you know. And Nixon, you know, at the end of his uh, second term, he would have like probably given Mitchell a pardon and now, it's all gone, it's all better, see? But no, what did Nixon try to do? He tried to cover it up. What did Bill Clinton try to do? He lied and tried to cover it up. He lied, you know, I did not have sexual relations with that woman, you know. He was getting a blowjob from Monica Lewinsky underneath the, um, the desk at the Oval Office, you know. Well, he was talking to some Palestinian president or some shit like that, or the Israeli president or something like that. Crazy, funny. He should have just stood still and taken the head and said just sheepishly, you know, you know, yes, I, I have appetites, you know, and just some southern drawl of his and just like accepted it. See, but no, it's a human nature to try to wriggle your way out of things. Okay, now we have to always remember it's not that it's human nature, it's more realistically to say it's animal nature to try to avoid pain, all right? But you see, the difference between animals and human beings is that we recognize that time passes and the future comes at us and quickly becomes the past, you see? Animals want to avoid suffering now. They prefer to live in uncertainty and, and unhappiness now than to have suffering now. They prefer to postpone it to later. You don't be like that, you be a human being, you be a man. You take the hit now because, of course, it's going to hurt. But in the long run, in the long run, you'll get it behind you quicker. See? You'll get it behind you quicker. And it will become quickly a small thing in your rearview mirror. As opposed to a very large thing coming at you at 100 miles an hour. That you are constantly trying to push forward. You, you, no, there's no reason for it. Okay? So... Put everything bad behind you as quick as you can, which is basically the, uh, what I'm trying to say. Stand still, take the hit, get it over with, and move on.